All right, so you really want to start editing your own presets, mashing up uh, all the milk drop presets. Uh, it's really easy to do. You don't really need to you need to, you don't need to learn to program or edit much of anything. It's really easy to do to mash up presets. Uh, so we're going to jump into that. If you do want to go into the deep end of really making presets from scratch, if you Google milk drop preset authoring guide that will go straight down the rabbit hole but that's not what we're doing here today so first things first you need to um, make sure you have Winamp even installed so uh, I run Winamp as administrator it's kind of an important step because otherwise when you're trying to save a preset, it says you don't have access, so just save yourself the trouble. But the version I'm running is 5.66. I think there's newer versions of Winamp now, but I don't know if it has milk drop included, so I just run this older version. It was a gold release. Um, before you also start up Winamp, you need to have the presets folder loaded up with some of your favorite presets uh, at this address. Once you have that, then you can dive into Winamp, run milk drop. So run into administrator. Here we are. Next things next, so you need to load up some music and start it playing. Uh, Winamp absolutely needs music to be able to respond to, other the, otherwise the visuals won't even render and you won't even see anything happen. Uh, I do have music playing, I just muted it. Uh, not muted, I turned it down in the Windows mixer settings so that you can hear my voice instead. All right, uh, I use the default settings for just about everything, actually everything, in Winamp and Milk Drop. But it's just that easy. So let's start up Milk Drop. And right click on the top window, Visualization, Start, Stop Plugin, Control Shift K. Uh, that's I normally use the hotkey because. Uh, if you do this a lot, it's a lot faster. Uh, so to, we got to initialize milk drop first. So um, to do that, make sure you have milk drop window selected. If you hit F4, it'll show you the preset name, which is useful. I hit R, that'll make the preset order sequential and not random. And then make sure you have scroll lock enabled. I do. Uh, if you really need the scroll lock enabled, because that, uh, that stops the presets from auto-changing. Uh, the presets, when you're editing a preset or trying to mash them up, if it automatically changes, then it destroys what you currently have been working on. So, very important. First things first, let's... Um, you need to find a preset that you really enjoy. So you can hit H or spacebar. Spacebar is just slower. H is a hard cut. So find a nice one to play with. You can also hit L just to go through the manual, go through it manually. So that yellow one's where we're at, up and down to navigate it. There's no mouse access. It's everything to the keyboard. So hit escape to get out of that. So this one looks like a lot of fun to jam with initially. So um, once you find one, you can hit M on the keyboard and we'll show you the preset editing menu. From here, go straight down to the bottom and select do a preset mashup, hit enter or the right arrow to go into it. Uh, so from here you can see there are five different uh, shader options, shader layers. So for each of these shader options you can select a different preset to use within that part of the sh of the, the preset, the shader, whatever. Lots. So to select a different shader, so you can do right and left to change the layer that you're on, and then if you do up and down, that will instantly change the look of it according to whatever the settings of that preset. So I kind of liked actually. My this one's pretty cool, and then if we go. Hit left, we can go up a layer, and you get pretty drastically different results according to whatever that preset is. So let's 
let's change the waveforms. It's kind of hard to see what you're working on. You can't hit escape, just see it, and then hit M again to go back in, and it, it shows you everything again, uh, and then up and down to change it. Um, also, you can do scroll lock, not scroll lock, sorry, page up and page down to go by page instead of just single, single movements, which is really useful. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's very easy to change subtle details. Uh, anyhow, no, first let's save it. So this is a good one. So to save, you hit S, and then my template kind of, so I can find presets I've made very easily is to do space, dash, dash, dash. Oh, great, you can't see it. Uh, let's make the window a little bigger. There we are. Space, isosceles, so my alias, and then edit one. And it saves it, save successful. If it says fail, save failed or something like that, it's because it doesn't have like write permission to write the actual preset file. Um, so you need to start it up in administrator mode to do that. Next, let's show how to edit a preset. So here's a preset which I think is a, a good preset for showing how to edit them because um, when VJing you really want to have different different versions of the same visual that you can layer with and jam with. So to do that, let's open up the preset editing menu again. Um, I think it's in custom shapes. Nope custom waves. Right, so we're going to just turn each of these off and you can see those white dancer bloppy things are disappearing. So we could save one as, uh, I, uh, let's say, uh, dancer zero, save another one with one, dancer one, Let's do the next one with dancer two, another one, dancer three, and then the last one is already there, but here, whatever, dancer four. So that's just a little bit of how to very minimally change the different shapes and waves and this. You can really just start editing the presets. Um, if you want to get a little bit more into the coding process, but in a minimal way, if you go into like the per frame equations, you can start to change the numbers uh, kind of randomly. If you're able to read into this, like X, Y, Z, these are probably translation things. Uh, anyhow, you can just start to change random numbers and see what happens. And I'm not going to dive into that right now, but once you figure out what a certain number is, what attribute it controls, you can really start to customize it and make it your own. But I find I only really need to do this based on when I have a very specific thing, like if the zoom is too fast or if the zoom is following, like uh, whenever a beat hits, it it like changes. It feels like you're moving forward, which sometimes is way too intense. I either want to remove it or whatever. So, um, yeah, that's how you edit presets, and I mash them up. So, happy mashing!